Okay, let's start. Um, the second talk this morning is um, by uh, Professor Reza Rahimi Tabar, um, which is on Anderson localization and intrinsic localized modes of phonons. Okay, thank you. And uh, K1 asked me to give some uh, very brief introduction to Anderson localization, which uh, you know it is very hard. Uh, task and at least for me and uh, I will do my best to introduce the basic concepts of Anderson localization and uh, at the end of my talk I will go to intrinsic localized modes of phonons which today's it is uh, some in business uh, I will give some introduction about the uh, uh, random trajectories of classical particles and quantum ones, and we'll give some uh, physical uh, intu intuition for the, their differences. I will go to a very uh, nice topic of weak localization, which is uh, will presence in uh, any wavy systems in presence of some uh, disorders. Uh, to characterize the uh, localized modes, extended and uh, critical ones, I will introduce the spectral and local dust statistics analysis, and uh, I will give some method, provide, introduce some methods to uh, calculate the localization lengths of some modes or some energies. Uh, at the end, I will go to the Intrinsic localized modes, which uh, the main difference of this uh, type of modes is that uh, in Anderson localization, you need some extrinsic disorder, but in intrinsic one, in phonon ones, you do not need. The system is pure, but there is a, some localization phenomena. I will give the physical reason for this case. Uh, to, uh, Today, you can, uh, you can see the Altschuler lecture notes. This is a very nice lecture notes by Altschuler. Binninger from uh, Mainz, I think. There is a, some uh, recent reviews in, in the net. You can download it, and you will find in somewhere these topics that I am going to introduce to you. Uh, this is a, one of the famous papers in physics. It is almost 60 years old. The field is completely active, even after 60 years. Uh, the problem that Anderson uh, wanted to investigate was that it was some quantum particle scattering in some disorder. Disorder is quenched, which means that it is no time dependency in the disorder. And uh, he wants to study the diffusion of such particle in the, these disorders. Uh, his paper is very difficult. It is, uh, honestly, it is very hard to even to read, not to understand <laughs> is the second step. And, but he is saying that it is uh, not surprising. Uh, he is saying that uh, at that time that he introduced this, uh, at that time, and even fewer saw its importance. Among those who failed to fully understand it, at first was certainly its author. Therefore, it is not surprising <laughs> that I will not be able to answer your question. Okay, this is... Uh, you can uh, see, you can read his uh, lecture in the Nobel lecture. It, the title is this guy. I will use some figures that uh, it is inside of this paper. Uh, what's the problem? This is the diffusion. Everybody talked about diffusion of something, diffusion of energy in some systems. Suppose you have some diffusion of, you want to study diffusion of some particle. You concentrate some particle with some distribution. This is the initial distribution and relax it. And let's see how it's going with time. 
Okay, what we know from Einstein theory, it will spread in the system at a time bigger than previous one. Therefore, variance of the system, variance of the fluctuation will increase, and this is a very well-known uh, phenomena that even we, we know from Brownian motion to wave packet in quantum mechanics. This is a very similar, similar behavior. What this, uh, this diffusion process is governing from this uh, Fokker-Planck equation, which uh, in 1905, uh, uh, Einstein wrote this. This is a diffusion coefficient. This is a sim very simple diffusion, diffusive process, which R square is uh, proportional to t, which is t to the power 1. Exactly this was the reason that the people don't believe the Anderson uh, paper at that time. Uh, what he is writing in his paper was that uh, everybody knows the Einstein, everybody knows the Einstein paper, but when I am saying that d should be zero, in some case, it is unbelievable for people, yeah? This is a comparison of two guys. This is a normal diffusion, which we know from the Einstein. This is a random walk. Is R square is goes with T. This is a de definition of diffusion coefficients. But uh, Anderson says that in quantum case, there is a possibility that R square goes to constant, which means that D can be zero after some time. Why? If you see the some random work, random work is uh, just some Markov process. This means that in each step you can decide you want to go back and forth, and it, there is no memory in the history of these guys. If you go to quantum mechanics, it is not the case. Quantum particle carry the memory. I will. Come back to this point, but to show that uh, how the memory can influence the trajectory even, I put our recent unpublished uh, works, which is that this is a normal Brownian uh, motion. This is a one trajectory. This is 10,000 trajectories. You can calculate everything, first passage time in somewhere. If you increase the memory for 10, previous steps, you will see that the trajectory will be a little bit smoother. If you increase the memory to a very long time, you will see it is very like to the, it is very similar to the ballistic case. This is a, it seems that it is even differentiable, the uh, trajectory, but it is not the case, indeed. If you zoom the process, you will see the fluctuations, but the variance in both cases is proportional to t. In the language of the distribution, it is very similar, but there is memory. In this case, there is no memory in this case. I will discuss that the quantum mechanics with the classical particles has difference in the memory time scale, which indeed it is almost infinity for the quantum mechanics. Yeah. Let's come back to the basic uh, quantum mechanics. What we know from Schrodinger equation, there is two possibility for the solutions. Maybe our spectrum be continuous or our spectrum be uh, discrete. If you have discrete spectrum, this is belong to this type of behavior. This is a decaying behavior in the if you put some wave packets after some length scale, which is Kc, it is a local definition of localization length. This will be goes to zero. If you have something like this, R is psi square, the probability to find the particle in somewhere, it will be some constant in. It depends on just dimensionality of the system. Therefore, we have a two type of at least two type of the spectrum. If you plot this type of wave function, you will find something like this. This is a, some extended one. 
This is some localized one, which the envelope is decaying with some exponential shape. But today, we know that there is another type of the wave function, which is between these guys. This, is, this happens only in the transition point that I want to talk about, the Anderson transition. This is a power law behavior, not extended completely, not localized one, but it is decaying. But there is no scale in this wave function. This, uh, what, this is the reason that we are putting its name as a critical state. There is no length scale. OK, let, let's come back to the uh, conductance. Uh, what we know up to now, Einstein relation, this is fokker planck equation for the density. Therefore, you have density. You can study the spreading of this density. Now you can define the conductance, which is the uh, current over the voltage that you want to apply. You can write conductance in terms of the conductivity, which is uh, sigma, which is known in physics uh, two in the university. Uh, if you go just by scaling analysis, not the uh, quantum uh, corrections, you will find immediately that in extended state, you have some uh, scale dependence of the conductance as uh, L to the power to D minus two. And in localized state, you will find something exponential-like behavior. OK, if you use the Einstein relation, which uh, gives some relation between diffusion and conductivity, if you have some zero diffusivity, you will find immediately zero conductivity. Therefore, you will find in for localized state, D zero and sigma zero, conductivity is zero. For extended one, D goes to constant, sigma will go to some constant. What's the Anderson model that uh, uh, will give some uh, criteria and uh, we, I want to give some physical intuition how we can go from this phase to this phase? Okay, this is a, one, of the, one of the simplest models that capture the whole picture of this uh, phenomena, which is known as Anderson model. Uh, there is a lot of models in, uh, uh, similar to even Anderson, which I put here some just uh, differences, some distribution of the dis disorder. You want to have some uh, disorder in, uh, with uniform distribution, with Gaussian, with Levy, etc. You want to put the on-site energy disorder. This is a known as Anderson model. You want to put the lattice in different, uh, with different uh, spacing distance in equilibrium. The distance is different. This is a Lipschitz model that uh, uh, I don't want to go in this way. But the main assumption in the Anderson model is that electrons are not interacting. Therefore, if you were compare with the experiment, this result is not evident that it works indeed. OK, the, let's go to the uh, quantum mechanics textbook. You want to tight bind, you, you want to study the tight binding model. You have some uh, lattice in the space. The, you have some energy in each point, which is epsilon i. This is an on-site energy. This is a local potential. You have some hopping between two sides, i and j. Uh, for simplest case, consider just i. Therefore, hopping to any first neighbors are i, and the potential in locality is a random, with some distribution. Indeed, the phys physical feature is not related to the uh, type of distribution, but the value of the critical uh, value at the disorder that we, we, have, we will have some transition, it depends on the distribution. But the whole picture is the same. What, uh, what uh, people know now, I want to go a little bit deeply in this case, if you have some hopping between two sides, which is I, and if you fix the disorder strength, the strip of the disorder you want to put in this guys, 
if you fix the W, always there is some I critical that if you increase the hopping, you will have metal phase. If you decrease I from I critical, this is localized case. This is uh, true for three dimension indeed. For one and two, it is not the case. It uh, all very small disorder in thermodynamic limit we localized all of the states in one and two dimensions, but in three dimension, this is the case that you will find always some critical value for the hopping term. What uh, if you want to reduce the uh, Anderson model, it is just a very simple diagonalization problem. It's a three diagonal matrix. This is a on-site potential will stay in the diagonal one, and I will be stay in the next and lower upper and lower diagonal one. OK, everybody knows how we can diagonalize this and how we can find eigenvalues, eigenfunctions. This is a trivial case. Therefore, the Anderson model will reduce to the local, to diagonalization problem up to now. But uh, why the classical particle has not uh, memory, but quantum one has? If you have quenched disorder, which means that you want to put random potential, the Hamiltonian is real. And any scattering will be elastic. When you have a elastic scattering, there is no any reason to lose the phase of the scattering. If you, have the, if you can memorize the phase, if you go very long loop, you will always memorize your loops and where you started, if everything you can memorize it. This is the main difference of the classical particle and quantum ones. To give some intuition about the Anderson localization, let's come back again to the high school, not high school, <laughs> first, uh, second year of university in uh, double well potential. This is a minimum uh, cell of the Anderson model, indeed. Yeah. Suppose you have some double well potential. In each uh, potential, you have some epsilon 1. This is a value of potential here. Here is epsilon 2. This is a jump between two uh, wells. Yeah. If you write a Hamiltonian, you have epsilon 1, epsilon 2. I is the off-diagonal one. You can immediately do diagonalize this. You will have something like this. This is a difference of. Uh, a spectrum will have some difference of the uh, on-site energy plus square of the uh, jump or hopping term. If you plot this guy, there is a two possibility. If you have uh, I0, if you plot uh, E1 and E2, you have some to care that uh, in some point there is a degeneracy here. If you increase the I hopping, this is a, we know that this case is related to localized one exactly. We, we, there is no jump, there, there is no hopping, therefore we have just localized state. If you increase I, these uh, curves will have some distance with uh, distance typical proportional to uh, hopping term. This is a two times of I. Yeah? But the, uh, what I want to uh, stress here is that if you have uh, two level very close together, if you increase some hopping term, the levels will repel each other. This is a known as a very old uh, phenomena, which is von Neumann and the Wigner discovered in 1929, which uh, this is a, their paper is on crossing rule. Re level repulsion. I will come back to this point again to how it is related to the Anderson localization. Okay, uh, what about the wave function? This is the uh, eigenvalues, but if you go, if you have some localized state in, with epsilon 1, which is phi 1, epsilon 2 with phi 2, and want to increase i, 
hopping there, you will have uh, two uh, phases. The on-site energy differences be very larger than hopping one or very less than one. If you have this phase, you can immediately use uh, perturbation, normal perturbation theory to find the whole uh, wave function as a, uh, in terms of uh, right-hand side and left-hand side wave function, which is the only one of these will have some uh, leading term. This is a just a very small parameter. But in this case, you have a two summation, which is the plus and minus one. Uh, you can call it as a resonance state. You have some probability, one over half in left-hand side and right-hand side. Therefore, by increasing the i, you are going from one side or left-hand side or right-hand side to equal parable possibility to be in both cases. OK. Let's come back to the Anderson model. Suppose you have some cells of these two particles, two whales here. OK. And even consider the case that here is a, a resonant state. This is not. And increase the number of the resonant states, which the cell, our cells were, was two units. OK, if you increase this guys, in some uh, concentration, you will have some overlap of the wave function, and you will go to the extended state. This is a minimal uh, cell of the Anderson model, which if you have some resonant states, if you increase the, their concentration, you will go immediately to the some transition. This is uh, exactly the quantum percolation problem. Okay, let's go to the, up to now, we have some Hamiltonian, we have some potential. Potential is, uh, suppose it is related to the hopping event. The H0 is an on-site one. You, you should consider some uh, distribution for epsilon i. This is a, I took some strip for simplicity as Anderson has done. Okay. Let me give the steps that Anderson uh, uh, concludes that there is some transition. Just, uh, I hope he will be able to explain his steps in his paper. Okay, suppose you have some closed uh, finite system. Suppose you, you want to have some boundary, periodic boundary condition with size n. You can diagonalize the Hamiltonian. You will have some quantum energies, eigen energies and eigen vectors. Alpha is related to the E, the number of levels. I is the related to the site of the, uh, our lattice. Okay. You can define the global density of a state, which is something like this. But it is not a good quantity in the thermodynamic limits because of that if you increase the size of system for given E that you want to study, there is a possibility to have exactly the same spectrum in the system. Therefore, you should regularize this delta function. This is a Lorentzian one, if you take the imaginary pi, this is a proportional eta over E minus E i square plus eta i square. Therefore, if you have in thermodynamic limits, you have some possibility to disguise. There is a pole in this Green's function indeed. And uh, this you should remove this pole with some regularization procedure, which we know how we should add. Therefore, there is a two limit here. This is artificial one, but the thermodynamic limit is physical one. Always we should take this limit first, and then eta goes to zero. If you do wrong, in wrong way, if you let eta goes to zero, in, as I told, in thermodynamic limit, there is a, always some singularity here. You cannot deal with it. This is a first step that uh, Anderson has done. This is a, we know in condensed matter in quantum mechanics why 
we should add. We should write this guy. If you regularize this with some uh, function, which is here is Lorentzian one, therefore, uh, uh, density of state will have some continuous and smooth form. If you go to local density of state, which is very important to understand the transition between localized and extended one, there is some weighted uh, average here. This is the weight is coming from the psi square. If you write this one, this is proportional to the imaginary part of this Green's function at uh, i i. Uh, therefore, if you see, you want to see this uh, shape of uh, this uh, local density of a state, you can write. You can consider two cases, extreme case. Consider i equals zero or w, which I have written the form here. It's it's form here. Okay. This is a main steps of the Anderson model. Let me summarize here. Consider your Hamiltonian, find the spectrum. Find the regularize your system with I eta. In his paper, he is using S in terms of eta. It is just parameterization. Evaluate the imaginary part of self-energy. This is a very important quantity when you want to measure some conductivity. You should some, uh, you have some contact of lead in somewhere, therefore immediately self-energy will change. And uh, take the n goes to infinity and later eta goes to zero. And study the probability PDF of the imaginary part of the self-energy. His criteria in his uh, paper is, if you have uh, some probability to have non-zero imaginary part of the self-energy, you are in metal phase. If you, are, you have zero probability, this is insulator. To have some intuition about this relation that he has in his uh, Nobel lecture, if you, you can write the imaginary part of self-energy in terms of the difference of Green's function of baird and uh, unbaird one. You can do in simple exercises that imaginary part of self-energy is proportional to G bear minus G zero. If you have some localized phase, there is no difference between the G bear. Particle cannot understand the boundary. Therefore, G bear is very similar to G0. Therefore, this probability should go to 0. This is insulator. Other case, when there is some non-zero contribution, which means that the particle is seeing the boundary, therefore, imaginary part will immediately non-zero. This is the reason that he is uh, using this criteria to understand the localized and unlocalized states. Uh, in, uh, he tried to use the average of the, uh, the self-energy to give this criteria at first, uh, but uh, in his next paper, he calculated its uh, uh, distribution of this imaginary part and find that this has the, it has this shape. It scales with 1 over x to uh, 3 over 2 exponential of something. If you calculate the mean of this distribution, it is infinite. In the lecture, uh, in Nobel lecture, he, he indeed corrected his uh, points that instead of the mean of these guys, he talked about the distribution, not the mean. Mean is infinity because of this distribution. OK. Let's go to the uh, density of a state of these guys. You have Hamiltonian. You, you can diagonalize it. This is a dust. This is the energy of the system. You have uh, at least two, two 
two phase here. This is a sum of the uh, states are extended, can go. I will give some uh, criteria to detect uh, which state is extended. And some of them are localized, which in this representation, it is symmetric with respect to uh, mean of the uh, distribution indeed. Yeah. But uh, if, you, if you increase the disorder, what we know now, it uh, extended state should, at least in three dimensions, should go uh, suppressed and go to zero this band, and we will have some localized state, which is uh, insulator here is uh, uh, metal. But uh, it is very, as I told, this field is very active. Just recently, if you see this paper in PRL, that uh, they found this uh, boundary that uh, separates the extended state with localized one. Uh, the value of this energy is completely can be determined from the uh, statistics of disorder that you are putting in the Anderson one. Therefore, one very uh, simple uh, question is that how we can, how one can use for phonons that in age state that separates the two phases how you can find these values in terms of the disorder. You, you should just uh, translate the electronic calculation to the phononic one. It is very, I, I think it's not so, so be hard. Okay. But uh, if you follow the Anderson uh, localization uh, papers, and their own localization is some transition, is not crossover in technically. This means that when we are talking about crossover, we, we mean that we are in critical states, there, there is no uh, length scaling stem. When you want to cross over, after, after some parameter, you will change the exponent of the scaling. This is the meaning of crossover. But the Anderson localization is not crossover, it is transition. In each transition, you have some symmetry breaking, technically. Its symmetry is very complex. It is super symmetric. Uh, symmetric. Uh, it, it took time, at least for me, a few days to find uh, what the symmetry is breaking in the Anderson model. You can see in this paper in 1901, a Miralin paper. But uh, let's come back to the... Uh, weak localization phenomena. I think that we can uh, understand now how there is a possibility to have uh, some uh, 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 the existence of some loop and uh, because of just memory. Okay, let us define some momentum for the particle in some how. We know from the wave function we can define and just integrate in some trajectory. P, D, R. It, it depends on dimensionality you should put in inner product here. P, D, R is indeed the action. It is going to, as you use the Feynman representation, it is going to I, E to the power I, S over H bar. Therefore, H is, S is the phase of the wave function indeed. Okay, if you go from one direction and come back, we know why we should come back. We can come back. We have some memory, at least. And if you change the direction, go in this way, just a P will go to minus P and DR will go minus DR. Therefore, phase will be the same. At least there is two, two trajectory that have the same phase. It is a difference with the normal random work that it can also have some uh, loop at least in one and two dimensions in three dimensions it has some critical values but uh, in quantum case there is a two times of this probability which has the same this means that there is a some probability to return to origin more than normal random work which is this phenomenon is now in a way weak localization, which means that you enhance the having a loop in the system. If you have some loop, your particle will not go very far away. They will be a little bit suppressed. Therefore, you have some loop, 
loop, you are taking time to have a loop, therefore you cannot go further. This is the meaning of weak localization in some system. Okay. Uh, one of the oldest uh, approach to Anderson localization is the uh, one parameter scaling theory, which uh, this is a just a very simple approach I will explain to you. And uh, from this approach, you can prove very simple uh, theorem, which is not rigorous, but it is almost good. Uh, this means that uh, in one and two dimension, all of the states at thermodynamics limit with presence of very small disorder will localize. There is no possibility for one and two dimension to have a finite conductance in thermodynamics limit. But in three dimension, there is some transition. There is a, some value in hopping and disorder that you can have this. Okay. Well, let me start with this guy. Uh, up to now, what we know from Einstein relation is that diffusion of the particle, quantum particle, in classical everything, can give some uh, conductance. Okay, as we have seen, conductance has some dimension L with size of system L T minus two. If you produce some uh, uh, quantity which has dimension and some dimensionless parameter, you can show that G will, can be written in terms of some non-dimension, dimensionless parameter G, small g, with some quantum number, which is the quantum of the conductance, E squared over H. If you write this guy, G of L, from this definition, you will have something like this. You have some diffusion coefficient, you have some size of system, you are size of system, this is density of state. This, this will give some average of the distance of the uh, what eigenvalues for energy. This is a mean distance, but the, this is a some time inverse of time, you can uh, the, interpret it as a, a escape time in some size L, if you have some diffusion of D. Therefore, this, this has energy dimension, this has also energy dimension. You have some, uh, therefore, this has not uh, any dimension. In this case, uh, Thales introduced his energy scales, that is the plan constant to the inverse of escape time, which you can interpret as a frequency. This is a parameter that controls the Anderson transition indeed. Okay, hope you are, okay, uh, let me go a little bit to people that uh, are not uh, familiar with the renormalization group, that uh, is that if you have some quantity similar G, G K, that I introduce as a, a tauless energy over the mean distance of this energy of the system, if you increase L, size of systems with some coefficient, 2L, 4, 8, and study the variation of this guys with respect to L. This is a definition of the renormalization group. If you're able to find some equation for this guy, log J over, with respect to differentiation, log L, this is a definition of the beta function in the renormalization group. This is a very simple uh, introduction for the beta function in any field theory, not uh, even in Anderson model. Okay, if you, if you go to the extended and localized one, what we know, this is an extended case, this is a localized one, you can immediately find the beta function that I introduced, you will find some, something like this. Beta function is proportional d minus two plus something. For localized case, you will have some log g. 
OK. What we can find from this equation is that if you have some positive value here, this means that J conductance will increase with increasing the size of system. Therefore, you have extended state. If you have minus sign here, you will have localized one. This means that the G is decreasing with size of system. But in two dimension, it is a tricky. This is a dimension of the field is dimension of the space. This means that this is marginal. This, is a, this has a marginal uh, weight in two dimension. At least you need to know the next order calculation. But uh, what we can do is that we can show that uh, this coefficient is minus and proportional to 1 over g. This, uh, uh, this, uh, this makes us sure that beta will go also 0 to the in two dimension. This is the main point that the four guys, Abraham and Anderson and others, has done this calculation and showed that this coefficient is minus indeed. OK. If you, if you want to plot beta g, you have something like this. You have uh, uh, decreasing with j and beta. This is always minus sign. For three dimensions, you have minus sign, which is localized, as I told. But there is a some g that it is going to positive one. This is extended one. But therefore, you have some fixed point here. This fixed point you can calculate around the stability point that it is a repulsive point. It is a not attractive one. This is a main signature of existence of transition. You should have some fixed point with flow will go away from it. Therefore, we are sure that in three dimension, at least in the level of this calculation, that there is a transition. OK. But uh, let's uh, come back to this concept that we introduced some localization length. At least there is a two method to calculate the localization length in any wavy system, phonons, electrons, anything that you like. The simplest one is the transfer matrix method. And next one is the Green's function method. First one is very simple. Let me explain in detail. Suppose you have some dynamical equation, Schrodinger, I don't know, wave, spring and mass, coupled one, everything. You have some equation. Just try to discrete it in, in the simplest case here. I discreted it here. This is a psi at site m plus 1. And in terms of the other right and left one, you can write this equation in terms of this uh, multiplication of these matrices. E minus Vn, Vn is the uh, value of the potential at the site N, and uh, psi N related to be to the site 1. Therefore, if you have, you have a second order differential equation, you need at least two initial conditions. You can choose 0 and 1. 1 half, you can put the wave function here and study the behavior at the psi N. This is a very simple step, but you need at least two theorems that go further. One theorem is Furstenberg theorem that gives us, if you have some multiplication of random matrices, you will have some positive Lyapunov exponent. What the, what's the Lyapunov exponent is that if you have some steps, if the value of the function would increase with the n, with some positive exponential coefficient, this is a definition of the very simple definition of the Lyapunov exponent. OK, how it is related to the localization length? You need the second theorem. This is not proved rigorously, but it is conjectured by Borland. This is a Borland conjecture that is that if you know the Lyapunov exponent, you can Make inverse, this is the inverse one. Inverse and find the localization length. This is true just for the eigen 
if you want to put the energy in the transfer matrix, as you see, there is some energy here. Therefore, for each energy, you can multiply these matrices, make their average. This is a, some norm. You can take the trace or determinant. It depends on you how you want to introduce the norm and make the average. After taking the n goes to infinity, you will find some constant. Which constant will depend on the energy that you want to put in the first step. Therefore, you be changing the E, you will find the Lyapunov exponent dependence on E, and you can go gamma minus one to go to localization length. This is true. The conjecture will be true, completely exact, in the case that when you want to put some E here, he be the one of the real states, uh, eigenvalues of the system. Otherwise, it does not work. To show this, I put some, our simple simulation. If you, we, we have some very small 140 sites, I put the wave function here, and uh, choose exact value of one of the exact values of the uh, eigen values of the system. If you choose this, immediately you will see the decaying case. This means that Lyapunov exponent is going to the uh, uh, localization length. But if you choose the another wrong one, random one, that it is not related exactly to the uh, values that you need, you have in your system, you will have some divergent case. This is the reason that this is conjecture. This is valid only for the values of that you have in your system. Okay, another one which I have put here, uh, I think that we will put all of the PDFs in somewhere. Therefore, you can read it. And uh, this is a Green's function method. This is a little bit complex than the first one. The first one is always, we know many theorems that uh, it is under control indeed, everything. But um, here is a little bit hard. Let me escape this guy. OK, let me come back to the von Neumann and uh, Wigner uh, observation that uh, when you have some disorder and when you have some hopping, everything, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, be random. And uh, when you're hopping, the levels will repel each other. What it does mean, how you can understand in the, with this uh, uh, criteria, the, which state is related to the extended one and which state is related to localized one. OK, it is very simple. Let me go here. Suppose you have some Hamiltonian. Hamiltonian, you want to diagonalize it. This is a general theorem. It is not related to Anderson, indeed. It is coming from random matrix theory. If you have some Hermitian matrices with random matrix element, it depends on how you want to randomize it, Gaussian, any distribution. This is just random. Value, calculate the eigenvalues and sort them from the smallest to the highest one. Take the another ensemble of your system, again, calculate the energies and sort them. Yeah? Suppose you have one million of ensemble of your calculation, therefore you have one million of the row of, for the energies. Go to the difference of, average difference of these guys. Calculate E1 minus E2 in all of these guys and take the average. It is very important if you do not do this point, you will not get result. It is a tricky point of this technique. If, if you have, if you can put as a delta, delta one, and define this uh, uh, dimensionless parameter, which is the energy in each uh, realization with respect to average one in all of the system. If you have, uh, if you want to see the distribution of the S, there is a just uh, four possibility. Random matrix story, closed all of the possibilities, only we have four case. What we know from the von Neumann-Wigner one, S was the difference of the levels. 
if you have, if you want to calculate this guy, they should be zero. How? I can have s to the power something, which at s goes to zero, it can go to zero. Therefore, you can have something like this, s to the powers beta, which I am sure that uh, everything is okay. S go, when goes to zero, you have zero case. But this exponent is not uh, unknown. For, from general theorem of random matrix story, we know that there is just three possibility for this exponent. For the P, there is a four possibility. For this exponent, there is a three one. This is a, the possible value for beta can be one, two, or four. There is no any other possibility. Okay. But for distribution, there is four case. You will have some Poisson one. You will have some, uh, this is a known as a beta one is coming orthogonal. I, I put some proof in these pages that if you have random orthogonal Gaussian matrices, you will have uh, beta one. If you have a unitary Gaussian random matrices, you will find immediately this exponent two, and symplectic one is four. I will give the, what, what's the meaning of symplectic one that are not familiar. Therefore, we have uh, some beta one, two, four. This is a shape of these PDFs. This is a Poisson one. Up to now, it was completely from the random matrix theory. Now we want to connect to the Anderson one. Okay. Uh, just uh, oh, everybody are familiar with orthogonal unitary matrices for the symplectic. It is a little bit hard to distinguish which uh, matrix in random matrix is symplectic. Uh, just uh, to know one trick that if you calculate the eigenvalues of these matrices, you will find minus plus uh, uh, values for all of the Lyapunov exponents. If you have a two, you will have minus two exactly in some errors that you have in numerics. This is a signature of to having uh, this uh, symplectic one. Okay, this is a simple proof that this will go to some exponent. Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's come back to the uh, Anderson model and compare the distribution of the uh, level spacing. Okay, suppose you have some Anderson model. This is a size. This is a disorder. This is a, you want to increase the disorder. As we know in Anderson model at 16, for uniform distribution, you will have some transition. 16 with uniform distribution, it depends on the distribution that you like. At least uh, for, we have some exact value for this. If you have some energy spacing, difference of the energies, you will have uh, some values in this case. It smoothly increase the variance and up to somewhere, the shape will be different completely. This is the age state by definition. The difference of the behavior of the distribution is changing. If you plot distribution of the level spacing, you will find this guy for insulator and this guy for the, uh, what to say, localized one. Uh, metal one, sorry. This is a, a small one, critical value is 16.5, exactly, this is a, this guy. If you increase these uh, values, you will go to this distribution. This is a very simple method that uh, you can find in which uh, levels you are in the uh, state of localized one and extended one. Okay, uh, there is another order parameter in the system, which is the variance of this guy. Also, is very important in terms of the W. If you increase the size of the cubic, you will find always somewhere that it is not related. The variance will fixed with va uh, value of the disorder. This is a 16.5 again. This is another way, which is almost uh, uh, equivalent. It is not independent one indeed. Okay, uh, let me, 
I put some another method, which is I have no time. I want to go to phonon intrinsic localized mode. This is a distribution of the local dust. Also, will give some hint to uh, characterize which state is localized, which state is uh, delocalized. You can see the details in this uh, PRB paper. Yeah. Let me uh, let me just introduce some another point that as we saw in the Anderson model. Uh, he assumed that there is no interaction between electrons, but we don't know how the observation in the experiments, which is they are uh, observing the metal in certain transition is related to the pure wavy behavior electron or the interaction of electron. Uh, at this point, uh, it was important to have some classical wave. Uh, localization. This means that there is no interaction between the particles. There is no charge for them. Therefore, if you see some localization here, also this means that uh, this is real wavy behavior of the particle, not related to the interaction. If you, if you see the literature, you will find very important experiments in during of, yeah, in from 59 to, if you go further, this is a ultrasound localization. This is a light localization. For this is, uh, they have some own problem that uh, you should uh, prove that there is no uh, absorption in the stem. This is really localization phenomenon. This is a very active. The very recent one, which uh, people are doing, uh, numerics, etc., is the localization of cold atoms. Uh, you have some optical lattice. You can uh, arrange the points of the nodes that you want to put uh, rubidium particles. If you have some very dense place, it depends on the distribution of these particles. You can have some localized state or extended one. This is a we are sure that there is no amazing interaction between the rubidium particles. Uh, I just put some uh, phonons localization. The two minutes, uh, okay, let me escape this one. This is just our uh, contribution in Anderson localization, which uh, was in the classical wave localization. Okay, let me go to the last one. I need five minutes. Sorry. <laughs> okay. In, um, uh, in Anderson localization, we had some in extrinsic disorder, on-site potential, etc. But uh, there is another possibility to have uh, some localization without a uh, presence of disorder. Uh, this, uh, this type of localized state is now an intrinsic lo localized phenomenon. This is related to the system, not to the external disorder, etc. And uh, I want, uh, there is a main paper is Blang in 88, intrinsic localized mode in unharmonic crystal. This is a very well known paper. This, is, this paper is in physics today. You can uh, read and review this field. But let me give the physics that how we can have this phenomenon. Okay, suppose you have a two oscillator. But in this case, it is not linear. Therefore, with, uh, what we mean what by nonlinearity is that if you increase the amplitude, you will have, you can change the frequency. Therefore, I want to change the frequency. I want to fix the frequency in terms of the amplitude. Okay, let's uh, fix this frequency here and uh, take another one in the nearby with another frequency which different amplitude. Therefore, you have two very high amplitude fluctuations. Now, consider this uh, two frequency be not uh, uh, yeah, proportional to P over Q, which P over Q is co-prime coefficients. It be not one over three, I don't know, two over C, four, two over seven, etc. <laughs> okay. 
if you have uh, this type of fluctuations, yeah, therefore, up to now, I have different frequencies with different amplitudes. This uh, not uh, uh, have this relation. But there is a strong theorem that allows us to say that if you turn on a small interaction between two guys, there is impossible, it is impossible to give energy from one oscillator to another one. This is a well-known theorem from Kahn, Kolmogorov Arnold Moser theorem, which states that, I will give some, uh, a little bit detail here, which gives that uh, when you have these uh, cases, remain rigorously stable for sufficiently weak coupling and ensure that the excitation energy remain localized in one of, one of them. Indeed, it is impossible to transfer the energy. Okay, L to show the details a little bit, consider the nonlinear wave equation, which is the, this is a linear part. This is a coupling between the neighbors. You can consider delta x as a coupling. You can change it to very big, therefore the coupling is small and high. This is a nonlinear term. If you linearize this guy, you will find immediately this uh, dispersion relation. This is a omega with respect to q. Therefore, you have some omega and q. Now consider the amplitude in one oscillator that is not in this area. This is the allowed phonon that you have in the system. And I consider this frequency in, with amplitude. There is impossible to use uh, to transfer energy from this state to another one via the some phonons. This is the reason that you have, we will have some localized state. These modes are known as an intrinsic localized mode. You can play with the amplitude, etc. There is a very recent reviews in the archive, which is they are measured these uh, modes in phonon, phonon stems. Uh, I, I put its uh, references here. But the nice thing is that uh, uh, thermal fluctuation can induce this type of... Uh, this is an experimental paper. They prove that even thermal fluctuation can produce this type of nonlinear fluctuations that do not uh, propagate in the system. This is in 3D, I think, but I am not sure. I put the references here, you can use here. But at last point, maybe it, is, it was familiar with us, maybe you know also, it is a calculation, experimental methods to calculate a phonon lifetime in nonlinear case, linear case, etc. There is a experimental methods that my colleague used it in Netherlands, he left to uh, Harvard now. They measured uh, from this TRSFG method to lifetime of the uh, phonons, which means that you have some spectrum for phonons, you can use three, at least, laser to detect the lifetime. Maybe it is be nice for you to, to know. Thank you. So uh, you mentioned that uh, there was this uh, prediction that by the French group that they uh, yeah. simulation or is it a prediction? Or, yeah, this one. This one? That's a, si a result no, of this simulation? No, this one. No. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I think they experiment. I'm not sure. No. This is uh, Ding Chen and my chef. Theoretical steps. Okay. So they, they're, they're, they're stable and I've seen the, the, 
because we did we did molecular dynamics and we didn't see. <laughs> yeah. we didn't but in this dynamics. paper, there is a lot of uh, this is 70 pages. Yeah, there is a lot oh, of yeah. experimental evidence to observe. But the important thing is that uh, it will uh, have some contribution in melting transition in solids. Many non-trivial case in polymer. People show that uh, the uh, uh, what to say folding transition happens when you have nonlinearity in somewhere. This is also play some role. The, this is a, a seed of the localization or the folding, which is coming from nonlinearity. Yeah. I have two, two questions. Uh, you mentioned that. Uh, uh, so let's uh, ask in this in this direction. Uh, suppose that your, uh, your systems uh, explain, but the one parameters, uh, one single parameter, and if you have the one single parameters, we end up with the conclusions of the Anderson localizations. That it means that in two and one dimension, if you switch on the disorders. Uh, actually, all the states are localized. In thermodynamics. Yes. Yeah, but uh, first of all, what happens if you ha we have the two parameters? The, the, this theory is breaks down or still it's valid. Mm -hmm. Another question is that uh, you mentioned the, the system is uh, for the phonon is the intrinsic. And what happened in the one dimensional uh, systems? Uh, can we have the extended state for the phonons or not? One-dimensional phonons. Uh -huh. Okay. Phonons the first the one, the yeah. Uh, the, your answer to first question is that if you consider the uh, scaling behavior of the wave function in some box L to the powers two Q, in if you have one parameter, you should prove that this has a very trivial scaling with the uh, moment second moment. I mean that uh, if you have uh, something like this, if you scale uh, tau q, tau q should be uh, proportional to the q. You can prove this if you have single scaling theory. But the observation is that in critical point that there is a transition, this is not the case. People today know that uh, this is not one parameter. Any moments have own uh, scaling exponent. This means that uh, their work is not valid now. Yeah? But uh, uh, other question, if you like to phonons, yeah. If you have some phonons, I, I mean a classical way, which uh, you have random mass. It's uh, the network of random mass in three dimension. You can uh, prove that the transfer matrix is uh, you can find the transfer matrix from the Schrodinger equation in this way. You can change energy to 6 minus omega square. O omega is the frequency of the phonon. And this order will go to the mj. This is a random omega square. But the main difference of Schrodinger equation and the phonons, uh, phonon system is that if you uh, go to the very low frequencies, yeah? very big uh, wavelengths, this will not see the disorder. This means that always, in, even in one dimension, there is uh, some modes that can go inside of the one dimensional system, even in thermodynamics limit. This is the main difference of the phonon localization in 1D and Schrodinger or Anderson one. It's a good question. A phonon, there is a impossible indeed to localize all of the phonons in one, even if for given disorder. This is the because of this relation. When, yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you for the nice presentation. Uh, I was wondering if it's possible to see uh, this type of intrinsic localized modes for light or other type of oscillations. I, I don't know. I just review it because of <laughs> K1 asked me to review intrinsic. Uh, we have not uh, done research on it, but in Anderson we have a lot. Okay. What we have to do before? Yeah, uh, 
so uh, just one announcement before we go for lunch. Uh, we have a group picture, group photo. So please, uh, we should, we'll just get together uh, maybe here. I have to see, it, so the photographer will come. So just wait, don't go anywhere till you take the picture. Okay. That's Tang, I guess.